Good morning. <laughs> good, good morning. <laughs> so I want you to know that God was just worshipped, and we're going to continue our worship. But I want you to know when God sees his people love each other, then we are the fulfilling the greatest commandments. And that's what pleases God. <coughs> Lies. Lies. I want you to think about that word for a moment. Lies. Because when, I, when you hear that word, what do you think about? Do you think that's a good thing or a bad thing? You know, one of the things that's interesting is when I've talked with different people about some of the worst moments in their life, I ask people, what seems to cause destruction in your life? What causes pain in your life? And, and a lot of times it's relational. And one of the things that I hear time and time again is people saying, you know what, I, I got hurt when someone lied to me. Or when I felt lied to. Whether it be a spouse lying to me, or a child lying to me, or a parent lying to me, or a friend li lying to me. And we know that oftentimes because of lies, that's how sin entered the world when Satan came to Eve and just told this lie, this half-truth. And Eve bought it. And since that, lies have brought destruction. You know, when I think about this, I think about how would we ever combat lies? If sin helped introduce sin into the world because of lies, how would God bring about salvation? And it would be with truth. And one of the things that we, are, we need to do more of is we need to be willing to share truth. You know, when I think about people's lives, I think about this imagery of a cliff. I think about people driving. I imagine, what if people were driving on a road and they were driving on this cliff and then all of a sudden you see one car falling off and then another one falling off and it keeps on going. But what if you are one of those people that saw that the cliff edge was leading to cars falling off? Would you not want to stop and put your car on and tell people, stop, wait, there, there's no more road, a cliff's going to fall down and it's going to hurt, you're going to die if you keep going down that path. But this is what happens so often, is people are living self-destructive lives to the point where it's as if they're driving off a cliff. Have you ever met people who you know, where you look at their lives and they are living lives of self-destruction and you're just heartbroken and you're saying, please, just stop. See, would anyone care enough to tell them to stop? Would anyone care enough to reach out? Would anyone care to say, that way of living, that pathway is just going to lead to an edge and you might be going fast, you might be going off a cliff, but let me tell you this. That if you continue on that path, you're going to end up in a worse situation. You know, I think as Christians, we need to be ones who tell people truth more. And I know in our culture, it's, it's hard to tell people the truth. It's hard to tell people that because oftentimes you know people will be hurt or convicted or offended or whatever. And we need to share it in love, but we need to be ones who are willing to tell people you're driving off a cliff and I care enough to tell you that there's a cliff edge. You know, as many of you know, I went um, on a trip. I actually went to California. And one of the things that I like to do 
on these trips is I like to have a lot of conversations. You know, one of the things about being an introvert is sometimes it's easier talking to strangers. And so this whole week, I spent a lot of time talking to different strangers, asking them about their worldview, asking about their lives, asking them all these things. And, and, I, and I remember just thinking how they, they bought into so many lies that Satan has taught, so many lies that they're telling themselves. And because they're telling themselves all these lies and buying into these lies that the world is telling them and that they're telling themselves, they're going down this destructive path. I remember I was walking down this uh, beachway and along the beach, um, there's homeless people all over the place. And so I, I walked and I talked with a lot of them and I asked them a few questions. I asked them questions like, are you happy? And I asked them, what are you living for? And I asked them, who do you have in your life that you love and care about? And do you know what the interesting thing is? They all, they all said, I'm not happy. I have no purpose. And I have no one to love. And, and, and we often think, you know, homelessness, and we think mental illness, we think about drugs, which are some of the major reasons, but there's a deeper core issue why they're homeless, and then talking with them, and they're saying, well, once you lose the relationships in your, you have in your life, then losing your house and a car and a job doesn't seem that big of a deal. And so I would talk with all these people, and it seemed like no one out there in California knew God. They didn't know anything. There was a street preacher talking, and he mentioned Hebrews, and I remember the people being like, what's a Hebrews? And you know, they were, there was a lack of knowledge. And all these people were hurting and empty. And then does anyone care enough to tell them? Because they're going down this destructive path, they're lonely, they're hurting, they're broken, and does anyone care enough to say, you know what, you know why you're hurting? Because you bought it into all these lies, you're telling yourself lies, and you're going down this destructive path, but do you have people in your life who love you enough to tell you the truth which can help you turn away from that self-destructive path, to help you get away from that cliff? You know, do people care enough? You know, when I was in Los Angeles, I saw two knife incidents. You know, you gotta love Los Angeles. But there was one incident where I was walking up and zoom, zoom, there were cop cars passing by. And they walked, and as I was walking, I noticed that there was this guy who had his neck all slashed. And he was holding on to the purse of the, with this young woman who slashed him. And then the only ones who were willing to help was this middle-aged woman in her 50s and this young woman in her 20s. And they were holding the woman until the cops came. And all, as I was walking, and I saw this huge crowd. I saw this huge crowd of all of these strong men and all these things. And I'm like, did anyone bother to help this guy? All it took was this one woman who was in middle age in her 50s went up and tried to help this young man who got hurt. Did, uh, did anyone care? Most people are just spectators. You see, as Christians, we can't be spectators because we know people are hurting and dying and they're going down that self-destructive path and it's leading to hell. And until we help teach them truth, they're never going to have that fulfillment and that relationship and those needs that they have in their life. Because ultimately, we know people need, most of all, Jesus Christ in their life to give them purpose and relationship in their life. They, God gave the world the church in order to have more relationship, to meet some of those needs. You see, that's what people are really looking for. They're looking for salvation. They're looking for God. They're looking for a relationship with people who they can share something in common with, which is especially Jesus Christ. But is anyone teaching truth? Now, if you look at anyone who's ever had you known in your life, if I asked you, do you know self-destructive people? You could say, yeah. But what did you do about it? If you, if you had a friend do drugs, would you just sit idly by or would you say, hey, let's have talk about this, about your drug issue? You know, the only ones who really change are those who really have people in their lives who give them an intervention and they hit rock bottom and then they see, I need to change. Because they have bought into all these lies, you know, Nothing will get better. I'll just dive into drugs and forget about everything. It's a, misde it's a deception that Satan likes to spread. But are we willing to share truth? 
You know, people have all these different problems, and the solution that I keep getting, and especially as I was going through this last week, was what people need is truth because it's so easy for lies to happen. People lie to each other, and it's as people, people have an easier time living a lie. Have you ever noticed it's easy to live a lie? It's easy to believe in this fantasy world just to push everything off. But do you know what really brings true healing? It's truth. And that's why God wants us to bring it. And so I want us to look at how we need to speak truth. If you love people, you need to speak truth. If you're a follower of Jesus Christ, you need to speak truth. If you care about your own life and your own family, you need to speak truth. Because truth is that, that device that God gave humanity to change and impact us to live the life that he had called us to live. Not an easier life, but a better life. A life that enjoys Him. A life that is willing to realize it's beyond this material world, beyond this short period of life on earth, but this eternal perspective. And we need to speak truth. You know, sometimes it's hard to speak truth. Here's a Geico commercial, a picture of it, where Abraham Lincoln's wife asks if she's fat, and he's there trying hard not to tell the truth. It's honest, Abe. Because what do we do? How come we don't tell people about Jesus? Are we afraid to offend them? If something's wrong in their life, if something's self-destructive, what would a real friend do? What would a good parent do? You know, I know a lot of you are good parents, and there have been times when you've had to, you know, show some hard love, or sometimes you had to sit down with your kid and say, you know, I'm telling you this, and you may not understand it, you may not feel it, but let me tell you the truth. Because if you continue down this path, it's going to hurt you. And my love for you says I can't let just idly by and let you drive off a cliff with your life and with your soul. But how do you keep that? It's like that person who shares truth saying, hey, there's a cliff. Don't drive off it. Turn around. And that's what we need to do with truth. You know, a lot of times there's a question of people, and this is one of the things that I was asking in California, is someone who says, well, who, who, what is truth? And I tell you, do you know what the Bible says? The Bible says in John 17, 17, sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. And I want people to understand God's word is truth. People always ask, what is truth? God's word is. And not only is God's word truth, it has the ability to sanctify you, meaning make you holy, make you clean, set you apart. It has the power to change your life. People are always asking the question about what is truth because they know deep down inside that truth is what changes your life. That's why they're always asking truth. But here's the thing. Truth is God's word. It's not your feelings because everyone has different feelings. It's not your opinion because everyone has different opinions. It's not your experiences because everyone has different experiences. But what we know is God's word is truth because it never changes because God doesn't change. He's perfect in knowledge and wisdom and what he says can change your life. And that's why we speak God's truth. Because what I say, what I feel, what I experience, what I think, really doesn't matter. Because I don't define truth. Now what I say, feel, and think can have some truth, but it, I don't define it. God does. Now why is, how, why is this so important? You know, one of my passages that I keep telling myself almost on a daily basis is this passage in John 1, 17, it says, For the law was given through Moses, grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Now we know the sacrifice that Christ had to make when he gave up the glory of heaven to come and become in the flesh. Now in the flesh, what did he do? He came and he brought truth and he brought grace. He thought it was so important, that truth was so important, that he was willing to come into the flesh and give it. And here's the thing. Truth and grace are the two things that humanity needs in order to have a relationship with God. And because of truth, people can understand the truth of God's love and grace. And that's why truth is not something we should ever run from. But in fact, it's something we should boldly and proudly share because that's exactly what Christ wanted to bring from heaven down to earth in the form of a man in the flesh saying, I have something that I know and I want the world to know it. And this is why we need to share. 
We see in 2 Timothy 2.15, he says, Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved, a worker who has no need to be ashamed, rightly handling the word of truth. Once again, we see that the Bible is called the word of truth. And we don't have to be ashamed of it. Sometimes we're afraid to tell people the truth. Sometimes we like to doctor up the Bible. Sometimes we, we think, you know, if I share this, will people be so offended that they won't listen any longer? Well, we need to just tell them the truth and let God work. We don't, it doesn't have to be doctored. It doesn't have to be prettied up. It's meant to convict. It's meant to cause sorrow. It's meant to bring peace. It's meant to bring joy. And so when we handle it correctly and we present it, that's when the Word has that power to change lives. The very people that we care about, including ourselves. You know, one of the things that Paul says right here in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 2, he says, But we have renounced disgraceful, underhanded ways. We refuse to practice cunning or to tamper with God's Word. But by the open statement of the truth, we would commend ourselves to everyone's conscience in the sight of God. Here's the thing. In the religious world, there's a lot of pressure on preachers and, and ministers and so forth and elders to try to grow churches. And they figure, you know what? People don't really like truth. You know, they tried to stone Jesus, they tried to throw him off a cliff, they ultimately crucified him on the cross. Truth sometimes isn't the most attractive thing. So what if we just doctored it up? And a lot of day time today, sermons are full of just self-help books, minus Jesus. And they'll throw in Jesus here, but a lot of times they're just self-help books. They're like, we actually do people a disservice. Present the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, and be unashamed and don't tamper with it, because the Word of God is, has the ability to change lives, but in order for it to do so, it needs to be presented in the way that God intended it to be presented. We don't tamper with it. If I think I'm not better than God, and so I'm going to take this passage, and I'm going to ignore it, and I'm going to take this one and take it out of context, and I'm going to just share it, and maybe that will attract people. That's not, that doesn't work. And it doesn't convict, it doesn't change, it doesn't bring joy, it doesn't bring peace. What we do is we want people to understand God's word accurately. And you want to know may, the main reason why? Because if you don't present God's word accurately, you give people a wrong perception and portrayal of who God really is. And who God really is by nature and character is the very thing that will change their lives. It's the very thing that will cause them to say, you know what, there is something better. There is hope. There is a joy. There is a peace. And it's found in the person of Jesus Christ and who He is. Why would I want to ever destroy who Jesus is? The more I know Him, the more I love Him. You know, even the hard parts in Scripture, when I know that Jesus loved me enough to share those words with me, even when I know it's going to make me uncomfortable and maybe even hurt for a while, but He loved me enough to tell me the truth because there are most people in the world, they're going to tell me what I want to hear. They're going to lie to me because they don't love me. But God does. And God does because He's willing to share the truth and the very things that you need to hear in order for your life to be changed. And that's why we don't want to tamper with it because we want people to have an accurate portrayal of who God is. Because knowing God is where true salvation and eternal life is. And then we see here in Ephesians 4.15, this is a passage that's very popular. It says, rather speaking the truth in love, we are growing up in every way into Him who is the head, into Christ. You know, are we speaking the truth in love? But not only are we, do we speak the truth in love, you have to love people enough to share the truth. Do you do that? You know how sometimes a fixing a relationship or healing a relationship requires some truth, it allows some honesty. And that's exactly what Christ did. Christ came down and said, here's our state. You are sinful. You separated yourself from God. But I loved you enough where I'm willing to die on a cross, rise up, and give you forgiveness of sin and the resurrection so that you could be with me forever in eternity. It was because of love that Christ came to bring truth. That's why. 
And so if we love people, we got to speak truth. Even to each other, we got to speak truth. Even to ourselves, we got to speak truth. Because it's easy to live a lie. It's easy to tell other people what they want to hear so we are liked. But it's better for people to hear God's word in its accurate form and be changed rather than us being liked. We have to speak truth. And that's the truth is what God has always chosen. Not sometimes. The truth is what God has always chosen chosen to change the hearts of humanity. One of the things that I saw is, I like to try to imitate. As I grow as a Christian, as a minister, I always try to ask, how can I minister and serve and be more like Jesus? What did Jesus do? You know, one of the things about this emphasis of truth is how often Jesus mentioned it. And in fact, when he was preaching, we see 31 times in Matthew, Jesus would say the term, I tell you the truth, or similar statement. In Mark, 13 times. In Luke, 9 times. And in John, 29 times. What do you think Jesus was trying to communicate to humanity? He's saying, what I'm telling you is the truth. And remember, truth is the very thing that leads you to the Father. And so we need to speak truth. You know, one of the things that we have to help people understand is you can't separate God and truth because God is truth. You know, one of the things that I love about God's character and nature is that He is so perfect in the attributes that He has that the only way to describe how good He is at that attribute is to say He is that. That's why when we say God is love, well, what that means is he's so perfect in his character and nature and love that he can't improve any better because he's perfect in it, so God is love. And we say God is faithful. He is so perfect and complete, he can't improve on his faithfulness. God is merciful. God is gracious. But one of the things that I want us to realize is the reason why God speaks truth is because he's perfect in truth, his character is truth, and he speaks truth. And in fact, he's defined by it. In fact, a look at what we see here. God the Father is mentioned here in Psalm 31, 5. It says, Into your hand I commit my spirit. You have ransomed me, O Lord, God of truth. That's how the psalmist described God the Father. How is he mentioned? How is Jesus mentioned? In John 14, 6, Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Here, Jesus calls himself the truth. He's, everything he said was accurate and leading people to the Father. John 15, 26, But when the Helper, referring to the Holy Spirit, comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth, who proceeds from the Father, he will bear witness about me. Do you see how every member of the Godhead, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, is defined by truth? They speak truth, they're full of truth, and they are perfected in truth. And so what they're trying to do in helping people become like them is to te teach truth. And here's one of the things that is really hard, and sometimes we like to skirt this issue, but salvation requires truth. Think about this. Sin is what lies where what caused sin to enter the world. Truth is what brings salvation. This is why we should not be ashamed of truth. Why would we be ashamed of Jesus who is truth? Why would we be ashamed of the words that Jesus spoke which are truth? Because the words of Jesus and Jesus himself are the very things and people who brought us to God the Father and the gift of eternal life. You know, one of the things is that sometimes we like to package things that look almost good enough but isn't quite truth. We like to tell, so I don't want us to have Satan theology. Because Satan knows his Bible. And in fact, he quotes the Bible all the time in the Bible. And in fact, what he does is he only gives part truth. Like when he tempted Jesus. Well, didn't God say this? Yes, he did. But that's not the context and the purpose of that passage, Satan. And so sometimes we, we like to do, have Satan theology which is this. You know, we have most truth or half truth. And we'll just throw in some other stuff. It's like New Coke and Classic Coke. You know, the classic Coke is what people liked and enjoyed. It's, it was the real, authentic thing. But New Coke, with its new packaging, it tasted almost like it, but it wasn't the real thing. You know, when we don't teach the whole truth, 
Or we just are ashamed of some of the truth and we, we try to cover it up by saying, but here's some worldly wisdom on top of it to try to sugar it up. People don't buy it. Just like New Coke, people didn't buy it because they knew it wasn't real. Here's the thing that I've been spending time with people and having conversations with people this last week was they would say, you know, I may disagree with Christians, but I would rather them tell me the truth and actually try to live it. And I'm like, that's what we need to do. The world needs truth. They don't want a fake version. If they drink the fake version of Christianity, the fake version of the Bible, the fake version, or that partial, they're going to drink it and get calories and they're just going to feel empty but not satisfied. What brings satisfaction is truth. You know, Ephesians 1, 13-14 kind of shows this correlation time and time again about how truth is related to salvation. It says in this, In Him you also, when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and believed in Him, were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until we acquire possession of it to the praise of His glory. Do you see how the gospel of our salvation is equated with this word of truth? And we know it's that word of truth, that gospel, which saves us. And so in 1 Timothy 2, 3-4, it says, This is good and it is pleasing in the sight of God our Savior, who desires all people to be saved and to come to the knowledge of what? The truth. So how are all people? God wants everyone to be saved. So what, is, what do Christians need to start sharing if we want to help God and His mission to bring salvation to them? We have to bring truth. And then James 1, 16-18, it says, Do not be deceived, my beloved brothers. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. Of His own will, He brought us forth by the word of truth that we should be the kind of first fruits of His creatures. Do you see time and time again how frequently we're seeing this word truth Truth, truth, truth. It's how we're saved. It's who God is. It's what Christ came and brought from heaven. Why do we need this truth? Because it's the very device that God has given humanity to be saved and to changed. And until we start telling people the truth, until we start buying it ourselves, we will never be different. You know, one of the things that I tell people is life change happens when we obey God's truth. I'm going to tell you right now, and you can probably, and you don't have to raise your hand, but you can, I've taught, I spent a lot of time in the church. I grew up in a Christian home. I've been a minister for years and years now. Did lots of counseling, did lots of Bible studies. And one of the things that I even hear from people who have been Christians for years and years and years, is they say, I don't feel like I feel experienced God's presence. I don't feel God's presence in my life. And I tell them, that's a very common feeling. You know, David, Elijah, Moses felt the same way at times. Some people will say, well, I became a Christian, I got baptized. Well, how come I'm not any better? How come life hasn't gotten better? I tell them, well, suffering is not related to whether or not you're a good person or a bad person. Suffering is going to exist regardless. And maybe as a Christian, you might experience even more. And then sometimes people will say, well, how come Christianity hasn't done anything for me yet? How come, my, how come my life doesn't look any better than the people who are lost? And I say, that's a good question. And when I hear that question, I ask them this question. Have you fully surrendered your life to God? Surrendered it to the point where you said, God, I want to know you. God, I want to know your word. God, by faith, I trust that this very book is your word. I may not get it. I may not understand it. I not, may not always understand why you said the things you do. But God, by faith, I will walk in this book. Have you done that? Have you done that to the best of your ability? Do you know what God says? Do you know Him? And are you obeying what God has said to do? To the best of your ability, in complete humility, in complete submission, in complete surrender. You know, we, we've seen the songs, I surrender all. And we'll sing it, and, but in reality, what we actually mean is, I surrender part. I surrender half. I surrender some. 
And then we wonder, why am I not getting the fullness of God's blessing? Or why am I not getting the fullness of this relationship? Why am I not getting the fullness of peace and joy despite hardship? And I ask, are you doing what God says? God doesn't promise you an easier life. And in fact, He probably promises a more complicated life in a lot of ways. But He promises you a better life a purposeful life, an eternal life, and a life that has meaning. And one that can have joy regardless of whether or not the worst possible things in life that could happen actually do happen to you. Look in the Bible. Name one godly person in the Bible who had an easy life. Did Moses? He freed people and they wanted to kill him. Elijah, he defeated, had the greatest spiritual victory over a prophet to Baal. He wanted to die. David killed the giant Freedom from the hands of the Philistines. He felt depressed at times. But one of the things that we see in godly people is that despite their suffering, they always return to God, I want to know you, and I want to trust you, and I want to do what the Bible says. We read through the Psalms. David's Psalms, half of them are laments, but he always follows up to, I will trust you. And I will trust in your word, and I will do what you tell me. You know, a lot of times I put up this picture from a Christmas um, carol, and a lot of times some of us feel like Molly. You know? How many of us feel like we have chains and we're walking with chains on every day? Tired, exhausted, broken, hurting. And you have chains on there of, of your sin. Chains on you of your guilt. Chains on you of feelings of hopelessness. Chains on you of anger and hurt and bitterness and sadness. And sometimes you just want to rip around and just say, this is not me. I'm tired. I can't walk and I'm just struggling. People walk like that every day and they feel like that every day, including Christians. But let me tell you, the, the solution to this is truth. And truth over a period of time in obedience, and obedience of faith. This is why Abraham, despite wandering for years and years, he would come and he's wandering closer to God and closer to his eternal home. And every time he did it, he's like, I get it. I get it. I get it. I will obey. I will trust. You want me to sacrifice my son? I'll do it. And then he would get it. You see, one of the things that people often ask is, how come my life isn't changing? Do you know God's word and are you actually obeying it? And can you humbly, honestly say you have submitted it radically? And let me tell you, if you don't radically choose to know God's word, if you don't radically obey it, your life will not change. A lot of preachers will not tell you that because they don't want to offend you. But let me tell you this, your life will never change and will not be better than lost people until you truly want to know God, know His Word, and obey it. And God doesn't give you His Word to be mean or to tell you because He enjoys telling you what to do. He doesn't like a loving father saying, I see that you're going off the cliff. I see that you're driving towards disaster. And I'm not going to utterly sit by. I am going to say something. And that's exactly what God did. He sent Jesus down to this earth to say something. Because he's not going to let you drive off the cliff without trying to warn you first. Because he loves you that much. And if you felt like you've been bound up and entrapped for a while, seek truth. You know, John chapter 8, verse 31 through 32, Jesus talks about a dichotomy of lies and truth and Satan and his language of lies and God and his truth. And in fact, he says this in John 8, 31 through 32, he says, So Jesus said to the Jews who had believed him, If you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. If you are not experiencing freedom in your life, ask yourself, do I even know the truth? Because God just made a promise here. Those chains that I'm walking with, with all the sin and guilt and shame and anger and bitterness, if you are not feeling free today, ask yourself, do I know truth? Because He made a promise. If you know the truth, the truth will set you free. But what is truth, God? Well, Jesus said what it is in the verse before. He said it's His Word. And He says, if you abide in My Word, meaning, are you living it? You know, sometimes we would rather live a lie than rather than live God's truth. 
Which one are you living right now? Are you living a lie or living God's truth? Are you obeying God or are you wanting God to bless a disobedient life? You see, when you live a life of obedience, knowing and trusting God's character and nature, we know that everything He says is for your benefit. All of you who are parents, you know you don't tell your kids what to do to make their lives miserable. And in fact, being a good parent is hard and it's not fun. But you do it because you love them. And hopefully, as your kids get older, they understand that. And that's what God is doing. God is being like this loving father. He's looking at his children and saying, You know what? I care about your lives. I care about your fears. I care about your salvation. I care about your choices. And so I'm going to tell you the very things you need to hear in order for you to have a better life in Christ. He wants to be the one to rip off the chains. Sometimes we want to keep the sin on. Sometimes we want to keep on the anger. Sometimes we want to keep on the selfishness and the pride and still say, God, I want to carry all this around, but still give me freedom. Give me joy. Give me peace. But that doesn't work. That does not work. You'll find preachers who will tell you that. You can live how you want, and God will still bless you. Go to church, give a few dollars, God will bless you. That's false. The time when God loves you enough to tell you the truth and says, if you abide in my word, then you'll actually be a follower of mine. You'll be a disciple of mine. And when you will finally know truth, when you finally know Jesus Christ, that's when you're set free. Because if you know Jesus, what can really bind you? If your relationship with Jesus Christ is more valuable than anything else, Jesus is going, to inf is going to make your choices rather than your emotions and feelings and experiences, which can so much deceive you. And when, in fact, truth that God teaches teaches us to have the right emotions. Because truth should lead to emotion, but it leads to the right ones. That's why God wants us to experience love and joy and peace and patience, and kindness, and so forth. So let me ask you today, are you wanting to know the truth, or do you want to keep living a lie? Because God is here willing today to set you free. He's willing to tear the chains off. He's willing to save you from your sins today. He's willing to sanctify you with His Word and wash you clean. But you have to say, I want to know truth. I will abide in His truth. And I will live that truth. And let me tell you, when you finally do that, you will be set free. And when you love other people enough to tell them the truth rather than letting them continue on living in their lives, you give them an opportunity to rip off their chains and let them to experience Jesus Christ. So let's not be ashamed of truth. Let's speak it. Let's share it. Let's live it. And then experience the joy and the peace and the promises of God, of the freedom that we have in Christ Jesus when He tears away all the lies we have told ourselves and all the lies the world has deceived us with. We let Jesus tear that apart and we see and we think clearly. If you need God to change your life, know Him, know His Word, and abide in His Word and help others do the same. And when you do that, you will experience God's promise of freedom. At this time, as we're about to sing our song of invitation and encouragement, if you want to experience God's freedom and you want to experience truth, and you want to obey that truth, we give you the opportunity to confess your faith, and to repent of your sins and be baptized for the forgiveness of your sins, living that new life with this Christian family surrounded you to help you grow in knowledge of Christ and abide in His Word. We give you that opportunity now as we stand and sing.